Hello everyone, Nicholson here, and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. On this show, we'll be breaking down all of the day's movie news and kind of giving a little bit of background into what it all means for the production in general, such as trailer announcements, director announcements, casting announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get into today's main topics. And the first topic is... Um, Fox has actually announced the uh, actor who will be playing Doctor Doom in their upcoming Fantastic Four reboot, and it is none other than Toby Kebbell. Now, if you guys watch the show regularly, you'll know about uh, two weeks ago, I believe, we were talking about the uh, the potential lineup of people who Fox was interested with in getting to play Doctor Doom, and uh, I stated that I felt that out of all the actors that were that were looking at being chosen, Toby Kebbell's name stood out the most to me. I was more uh, I was more aware of his past work uh, in mo movies such as Wrath of the Titans or uh, Prince of Persia, Rock and Rolla. You know, he's done a lot of really great films and been kind of a sort of upcoming character actor. And to see him be chosen to be the main villain and doc uh, get one thing straight. Doctor Doom is the type of character that's not just going to be a one and done. Doctor Doom is to Fantastic Four that the Joker is to Batman or that... Uh, you know, Green Goblin is to Spider-Man. You know, he is his main nemesis. So he's not just going to be a one-and-done character. He's going to be a multi-layered character, most likely involved in several iterations of the the Fantastic Four movies. Uh, maybe not uh, the same level as, say, Lex Luthor, where he's pretty much just always the same main villain. But but uh, maybe the guy kind of pulling the strings in the background after the first film. Uh, but I'm really happy that they went with Toby Kebbell. I think out of all the actors uh, that they could have gone with, I felt that he was the strongest. Um, just, I mean, there's not really much else to say about it. He's just, he was definitely a good choice with it. Um, the, the movie's going to start filming here in a couple of weeks, which is really exciting. It's going to be opening up June 19th, 2015. So 2015 is still looking to be a big powerhouse of a, of a year of film, but... Some movies are moving in and out. There was actually, with today being April Fool's Day, there was a fun story, um, two of them actually, on two different news sites about the Batman vs. Superman movie coming out. Uh, one of them was that Michael Cera had been cast as the Riddler in Batman vs. Superman. I thought that was quite funny because Jesse Eisenberg has always been called the, the rich man's Michael Cera. They're both very similar. They kind of look the same, play the same types of characters. So having them both playing a major villain against one of the, the two uh, icon or uh, titular characters. I thought that was pretty funny, and the report looked legitimate until you saw at the end that Batman vs Superman had adjusted its date and was move and was moving to April first, twenty sixteen. So I thought that was a, a really nice little nod. Um, but the second one was about that the 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 race of chicken, I guess you could call it, against D or v versus DC versus Marvel with the May six, twenty sixteen release date and one of them veering off, was that Warner Brothers was announcing that they were going to be pushing Batman vs. Superman all the way back to December 2016 because they were going to be uh, fast-tracking a Wonder Woman solo film that was to be released in October-November 2015. And so they would then have their 2015 film, 2016, 2017, 2018, and so on and so forth, unveiling their plans, because that's what DC eventually wants. They want one movie per year minimum. Um, and so I, I thought those were both kind of funny, and they both revolved around the fact that um, that they've they keep changing the date. You know, they they keep they keep altering it. They really don't show at least publicly. Internally, it may be a completely different thing, but publicly, they're not showing a lot of faith in this project. Um, they are announcing casting, which is surprising when you take a look at other films like Star Wars, which starts filming very soon. Uh, within the next two to three weeks, they're going to start filming, and they haven't announced a single cast member. The only thing we've heard is that the only person, ca or the only thing cast in the movie is R2-D2. So at least, I guess that's some confirmation right there that R2-D2 is going to be in the movie. So when when looking at stuff like this, like I think Toby Kebbell is definitely going to give the Fantastic Four a run for their money. He can play a villain really well. He can play an adversary. Prince of Persia, even though he was a good guy in that movie, he was an adversary for the majority of the film to Jake Gyllenhaal's character. And so going up against like Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, Kate Mara, Jamie Bell, but I'm excited to see what they look like. You know, especially Jamie Bell as the thing. I mean, looking at Jamie Bell, it's the equivalent of seeing, oh, what would be a good example? It'd be a good example of seeing Michael Cera playing the Hulk. <laughs> you know, like, how would that happen? He's not a very built individual. 
Um, he's kind of scrawny. He's got a short, uh, a short stature to him. So it's going to be interesting to see what they design for these characters, what they make them look like. We know that that they're going full CG for the thing. We know that already. So they have a lot more to work with and a lot more freedom to work with it. So only time will tell, but I'm definitely happy with this casting. It's it. This movie's starting to get back on track. We know it's based on the Ultimate Fantastic Four, which is uh, a younger uh, retelling of the origin story. So that they're going to be taking a little bit of liberties, most likely, with the way that these guys are created. I hope it's not the leaked idea that came out a while ago where it was Johnny Storm and Sue Storm were already, like, they were almost like mutants. And uh, and Reed Richards and, um, oh, what's the thing, Ben Grimm were somehow infected or affected by radiation of some kind and altered them. And then that, they formed the team. I hope it's not that. But anyway, uh, the second piece of news today is Samuel L. Jackson's been doing the rounds for uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, and so a lot of people have been asking him um, certain questions about his future in the Marvel Studios and, and stuff like that, but one interviewer actually went on to ask him about his status of Incredibles 2, and whether or not his character Frozone will be coming back, and he went out, he said, oh, I'm, as far as I know it is, you know, uh, Brad Bird, the writer and director of the original one, who's going to be coming back to write this one. Currently, uh, he's working on Tomorrowland, a new movie starring George George Clooney and Hugh Laurie but what I said every time that he sees him on the street he goes yeah man I'm really excited you know Frozone is not one of the Incredibles but he's always been a part of every story that I've been trying to tell every every idea that I have Frozone does come with it so it looks as though there's a pretty good likelihood that Frozone will be in Incredibles 2 which is really exciting when you think about it because he was one of the better parts of the movie he was you know that opening bank sequence where or yeah was it a bank I know they were trying to save all these people from burning building. I could swear it was a bank. There was a holdup of some kind. Maybe it was just a convenience store of some kind. Um, but that whole segment was, I felt, one of the funnier segments in the entire movie. I just loved their banter between one another. The two characters really clicked well together. And Craig T. Nelson and Samuel L. Jackson both work really well together, even though it was just their voices. So the the fact that Frozone is going to be coming back is really interesting. But, but Samuel L. Jackson is actually interested in a different part of this movie. He wants to know what's happened with Jack-Jack. And how Jack Jack has evolved, how he's changed, because the movie supposedly has not been confirmed, but supposedly this movie is going to be set around 10 to 12 years after the first one, maybe even a little bit more, maybe 15 years. So at that point, Jack Jack's going to have been a teenager. You know, he's going to be 15, 16 years of age, or even 12 or 13. So they're both very interesting uh, areas for these people to be exploring and for these characters to really kind of be elevating to. And with the fact that superheroes are now back in the limelight in this world. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Frozone's character has evolved and how he's changed because, he, you know, he kept wanting to be a superhero. Uh, but then when they outlawed it, they made them, you know, take off their mask, can't do anything like that, then he never really took that. And so he and Mr. Incredible always went and went off and did their own little vigilante type thing. And uh, I, I, I can't wait to see this movie. Everything about this movie, the fact that Incredibles 2 is coming just gets me giddy. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Uh, it's taken way too long. This movie should have been announced back in 2005, 2006. Um, this should have taken the spot of... Uh, what was the one after Cars? I can't remember the one after Cars. But it should have been there. It should have been coming out around 2007, 2008. Uh, is when the movie should have been released. But anyway, we're getting it. Finally, Brad Bird, hopefully, as soon as he's done with Tomorrowland, which sounds really intriguing, um, as soon as he's done there, he'll hopefully jump right onto the Incredibles 2 bandwagon and we'll really get some, some good information coming. So until then, this is all we got. Next uh, has been a topic that... When I read the article, I didn't know why a lot of these uh, movie sites were actually running this as new information, unless it was just Jerry Bruckheimer re-saying the same things that were said all, over a year ago. Um, wh when he was talking about uh, the status of Top Gun 2. So we know the Top Gun 2 is coming. When, uh, it was made public when Jerry Bruckheimer had his very public breakup with Disney um, after The Lone Ranger. You know, he had done all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. But outside of those, he hadn't had a lot of big successes. You know, he had The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which didn't, it, it wasn't a huge success. I, I'm pretty sure that that movie actually lost money. Um, but then you look at, I mean, Lone Ranger. Like, that was just, first off, the quality of that film was just garbage. And that wasn't, obviously, it wasn't his fault entirely. I mean, he had a hand in it, but it wasn't his fault entirely. But when you look at all these other factors, he, he has been trying forever to get some of his other movies off the ground. Uh, and he just hasn't been able to because he's been tied with Disney and Disney's very family family friendly. So when he left 
when he left Disney and went to Paramount, and Paramount was the studio he was with before, like a long time ago, um, he announced that he's going to be moving ahead with two projects. The first one's going to be Top Gun 2, and the second one is going to be Beverly Hills Cop 4, because uh, they actually tried to do a Beverly Hills Cop TV show. Eddie Murphy came back. He was going to be the chief of police in Detroit, and, and um, Axel Foley Jr. was going to be the main character, and he was going to be played by um, Brandon T. Jackson. And... Uh, for one reason or another, I, I have a feeling that the quality of the show wasn't very good, but it sparked an idea because essentially they passed on, on the pilot, they filmed the pilot, and they passed on it, and then they immediately came out a few weeks later and said, actually, we're moving ahead with a new movie. So I don't know if maybe Eddie Murphy showed them something on set, or maybe they just had a great idea while they were filming it and decided, you know what, we're going to go ahead with this. Um, we really don't know. But then they, when they also announced Top Gun 2, this is before the passing of Tony Scott. And Tony Scott was on board, at least in a in a, a vocal capacity, to say that, yeah, you know, like, let's see where we can take this. And the main plot point, or at least the main topic that they're going to be trying to delve into with this movie, is the, the argument of drones versus human pilots. Um, and whether or not uh, uh, human pilots have kind of become obsolete whether or not drones are the future because they're more efficient, they're, they're calculated, you know, people can control them from a safe distance, they're not worrying about getting hurt or anything like that, but apparently in this movie Maverick, Tom Cruise's character Maverick, is supposed to show them that they're not obsolete. Um, and the, the theory going around online is that Tom Cruise is going to be relegated to the Tom Skerritt character, um, where he's more the mentor and there's going to be a new lineup of uh, recruits coming in to showcase that listen drones are not the future they're a great thing to have with us but human pilots are always going to be the first and foremost um, but I mean nothing else has been announced about it you know this is the same information that came out a year ago a year and a half ago that they that the movie's going to be about drones and it's going to be about whether or not they seem obsolete or not and Tom Cruise is going to be involved we don't know any more actually we know less because now we know that unfortunately due to these circumstances, Tony Scott is no longer involved with the project. Tony Scott was the original director of Top Gun, as well as countless other movies. I mean, he's Ridley Scott's brother, so I mean, right there has a lot of credence to him. But I mean, Tony Scott's responsible for, uh, what was it, Beverly Hills Cop? Um, was it the second one? I think it was the second one. Yeah, I don't remember if he directed the first one. I don't think so, but I know he directed the second one. Um, but he's also responsible for, like, Spy Game, Man on Fire, uh, you know, uh, Unstoppable, the, that was the last movie that he completed. He's got a, a, a vast resume under his belt. So, I mean, the fact that he was looking to come back really kind of spurred a lot of hope in me for this project because I, I really like Top Gun. The homoerotic sequence aside, um, I, I really respect Top Gun for what it is. I mean, no one has been able to, to compare to those flight sequences yet. Those were just exhilarating. Like, they actually filmed those. You know, I mean, obviously they didn't film rockets shooting off of them and actually blowing up different planes. Those were models. But um, the fact that they are still looking at going ahead with this movie and and even Beverly Hills Cop 4, which I think is a little bit too far gone. But, you know, we're, we're in the time now where all these studios are revisiting all these projects that are 18, 20, 25, 30 years old. Um, and not all of them are going to be successes. You know, like it, it's... the the mega budget movies have made studios so scared to risk a, a an investment in an unsolicited project, you know, an, a, an untested director or subject matter or something. If it's an if it's a new project, very rarely do the studios want to go in and say, "Listen, we'll we'll fund you eighty million dollars, hundred million dollars, even fifty million dollars." Because they don't know if they'll make that money back. They don't know if they can market it because they've got, you know, five other tentpole movies that they're releasing throughout the year. And so when you look at the fact that these studios are getting now so scared to, to put money onto unknown projects, they're running out of sequels because the, the properties that they had that they thought were gold mines are now starting to run dry because these movies are not as successful. There are the odd exception, you know, superhero movies are more abundant than ever, but you get some movies that come out, and the first one does really well, and then they do a sequel, and the sequel, even though the quality may be less, it does even more money than the, the first movie did. But then the third one comes out, and it's even worse quality than the second movie. People are starting to catch on, and they start to get diminishing results. And so now, with all these 
project kind of being mined already, the studios look at it and say, okay, well, let's go further. Instead of looking five years or 10 years, let's look 15 or 20 years or even 30 years to see if we can do a sequel. Like later on this year, we got Dumb and Dumber 2 coming out. Not complaining at all about that one, but I'm just saying like they're, they're going back very far. Uh, to make sequels. Now, before people start grimming and groaning about Dumb and Dumber 2, I want to assure you um, the Farley brothers who directed the first one are directing this one. Um, Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels are back as Lloyd and Harry. So, I mean, it's set like 20 some odd years after the first one. It's around um, the fact that Harry finds out that he had a, a child about 20 years ago, 18 to 20 years ago with... Uh, with Breda Felcher, remember the character that they mentioned in, in the first one when they were in that hot tub? Um, apparently he had a child with her, and so they go on this road trip to try to find her, and it, the, the they showed footage at CinemaCon last week to all the, the people who are in attendance there, and from what I've read online, it, it apparently is hilarious. Uh, I'm hoping that we're going to get a trailer soon. It doesn't come out until November, as far as I'm aware. I think it's around American Thanksgiving, but... Um, we don't know any more information about that, but the fact that these studios are mining all these old properties really kind of has me worried because the the last movie, now, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, put in the comments section if you guys can think of any other titles, but this is the only one that's coming to my mind right now, and that's Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim was a, a $200 million, $160 million plus marketing movie that did not have an already established uh, subject you know it, it didn't have any other properties to mine from that people would have been familiar with so it was a new new project and they sunk a lot of money into that and they ended up from from my understanding just in the theatrical run alone they, they made money on it and that's the goal the studios if the studios look at a movie and they say they just about broke even or maybe didn't quite break even in a theatrical run but then the home video sales take off and and pass that and make them a little bit of profit that movie is probably not going to get a sequel. Even though they made money off of it, they had to wait for home video to do that. The studios normally want to make their profit in the theater. It, it There's less diluting of the profits. They don't get spread out as much. Um, you know, it's a very even number. It's like 27% or 26% of the overall gross goes to the theater chains. So they have like 74, 75, 76% of all the money that they make going into the movie. And then they, you got to take out producers' back ends. You got to take out actor deals and and you know and and just additional deals here and there wherever they may be. Whether it's the writer that gets you know five one uh, percent of the overall product uh, uh, gross, if it's the person who inspired the story, if they get a percentage, you know whatever the contracts may be, the studios rarely see maybe fifty percent of that profit. So if a movie makes five hundred million dollars. And the studio sunk two hundred and fifty million dollars into that. They are just breaking even. That's all they're making. They're not getting any more profit from it. So, but um, it just has me worried. I, I wish the studios would invest more into not necessarily high risk, but more uh, more fresh ideas, fresh takes. You know, get, getting more unique opportunities in the theaters. But that's just my opinion. And so now, th this is going to be a quick little segment here. This is something I'm trying to, so let me guys know in the comments section below if you like this kind of thing. But uh, it's a new segment called Rapid Fire. And essentially what I'm going to be doing is listing off a couple of topics uh, that have come out, but we don't really know a lot of information. So it's just going to be updating you guys on the fact that these projects are moving forward. And then if you do have questions about them or want to talk to them, talk about them a little bit more in detail, put in the comments section below, or you can email me at um, movie news with Nicholson at gmail.com so you can either put a comment uh, comment in the comment section or email me at movie news with Nicholson at gmail.com and then I'll address that on a later show but so the first topic in rapid fire is with age of uh, Avengers age of Ultron currently filming in uh, South Korea we've gotten a quick glimpse of what the new uh, costume that Captain America will be wearing and it, it looks like it's literally pulled right from the comics I saw one comic and I can't remember the, the name of it but it, the suit looked identical to it identical it looks like it's the same build and size as his shield uniform that he wears in winter soldier but with kind of the paint job that he had in avengers so it's it's got that larger bulkier padding to it uh looks a little bit more muscular a little bit more intimidating but it's got the same color pattern the the big red and white stripes on the stomach and, and abs uh the the big blue and white stripes going up and across the shoulders he's now got a big 
uh, what looks to be shield on his shoulder, like a circular shield. So there's a couple of really cool things about it, but they're not very good images, and we still haven't seen an actual publicity photo from Marvel or Disney. So I'm not going to show a picture of it just because the pictures are not very good quality, and they haven't released an official one. But when they release an official one, I will definitely let you guys know. And the second topic we have in Rapid Fire today is uh, Magic Mike 2 has just received a new title and a new director. So the director, uh, his name is Jeff... Um, Oh, I'm forgetting his last name. Um, but he was basically a shadow of sorts to Steven Soderbergh. Steven Soderbergh was the director of the original Magic Mike, and uh, he was, I believe, his director of photography on that. Um, and so he's now been picked to direct the sequel, which is now going to be called Magic Mike Extra Extra Large, or XXL. Uh, take from that what you will, um, but they have announced that it is moving forward with an October start date. We know that Channing Tatum's back. But outside of that, we don't know anyone else confirmed to be back. Joe um, Mangliano most likely will be back. Matthew McConaughey might be back, might not be back. It depends because Steven, Sp Steven Soderbergh was the draw for a lot of these people to become in uh, involved in this project. So whether or not they hang on for the sequel is going to be up in arms. We're not going to know about that for a while. But I figured there, the movie had a cult following. It made a lot of money in theaters compared to its budget. Blew expectations out of the water in comparison to what people thought it was going to be like. So... It's really intriguing, but no release date has been issued. But I mean, if they're if they're starting filming in October, I wouldn't put it past them to have a late summer, like fall release date, twenty fifteen. So, once we get more information about that, I will definitely update you guys on here for that. Okay. Well, that'll about do it for us today on Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you guys so much for watching. You've been a great audience. And you can go ahead and click the subscribe button there at the bottom of the screen so you can get uh, daily updates on whenever I post a new video or any sort of topic comes up about that. You can also go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, to get daily updates about all your movie news. As soon as something is announced, I will be posting about it on Twitter. So definitely go ahead and add me on there and don't forget to click subscribe. So if you guys have a topic or a suggestion that you would like for me to talk about on the show go ahead and put it in the comment section or again you can email it to at or uh, you can email it to movie news with nicholson at gmail.com and i will address those on every friday episode every week so without any further ado this has been nicholson you guys have been great and thanks again for watching you take care